appointment of the week <laughs> it's actually my appointment this time I warned her though before I can tell I said it's don't don't be scared of my heartbeat it's not right it's not if I said it's right it, <laughs> as it is not right but it's normal for me to for that to happen I didn't want her to like freak out and go catch somebody and do all that stuff that they do sometimes whenever you get somebody new it's raining because we're leaving the doctor's office and Tim is so sweet he offered to go get the bus so I wouldn't have to get in the rain. I was not expecting to make this video today so as you can see I'm in the hospital and it was not a great experience last night. I was having some arrhythmia and I have a history of atrial fibrillation anyway, so that wasn't exactly a surprise. All of a sudden, yesterday evening at about 6.30, I started feeling really weird, very shaky, very, very nauseous and having chest pain. It was scary how fast it came on. I took an aspirin and I finally decided, you know, it was time to come in and get checked out. Tim brought me in and they started running some tests. So a doctor just came in and um, we spoke about the the plan of what to do from here and they ran a lot of the normal tests last night that that's that are typically run to check and see if somebody's had a heart attack and thank god thank god that none of that was in, indicative of a heart attack so that's really good they actually um, decided to go ahead and admit me so they did a CT angiogram and that came back normal. He came in and said that they're gonna do an ultrasound, just a, another way of checking to make sure that everything's okay. So hopefully if everything goes well, I'll be back home later today. So I just had an ultrasound of my heart and the tech said that it shouldn't be too long before the results are back from that. And then we'll make more of a decision about what happens today. So there's that and we'll see what happens. So right now I'm in a cardiology appointment waiting to actually see the doctor. I had to come in for an appointment after my heart was doing its recent palpitations and arrhythmia after I had to stay in the hospital a little bit. So we'll see today how they change my medicines around to help me start to feel a little better. Hey y'all, I just wanted to come on and explain a little bit about what's been going on in our neck of the woods. I was having a day where I just really did not feel good and then all of a sudden my chest started hurting. I started being sick and started having really bad heart palpitations. I know I was having arrhythmia pretty bad and Tim said, it's time for you to go to the hospital. We just need to go. Have you, have you checked out, make sure that um, your arrhythmia is not dangerous. And so I went and stayed a couple of days in the hospital. They, they did a bunch of testing and thankfully it's just just my regular arrhythmia that I've been dealing with. Yeah, Tim was at home holding down the fort with the kids. A lot of times whenever we go into the hospital, if we know that 
one of us isn't about to have surgery or is not in like a, a critical condition, send the other one home. From time to time, we have to go into the hospital and it's just not that big a deal sometimes if the one goes home and takes care of things and you're mm -hmm. basically just sitting there waiting on all the test results to come back. They can make sure that you're safe to be discharged, that kind of thing. Yeah. So anyway, longest explanation ever, but I'm at home. I'm doing okay. I went to see the cardiologist today. My appointment came out fine. So just kind of routine stuff. We do have a lot of things we need to get done. Davis, our little boy with eosinophilic esophagitis, we've seen in all of his information, he's been interested in a medical study. We live in North Carolina and the study is being done at Cincinnati Children's. So, you know, that's not close. No, um, it's about a uh, six hour drive. Yeah. Straight through. Yeah. Which six hours doesn't sound like a whole lot. It, that's forever long yeah. driving. We may be able to fly some of the trips. It's it's um, a total of like 11 trips, I believe, back and forth. If he gets accepted, which the only treatment which is being used off-label, it's not even, you know, approved yet for his disorder, the only treatment they have doesn't work for Davis. You know, there's no other medicine for it. And so, hopefully, being accepted this trial, if not, then that means God had other things in store. And mm -hmm. one big thing is the outside still looks like we dipped it in mud. The base color is brown of what we're going for, trying to do. And then we've never gotten the bus completely painted. Something always happens. It's just life. Something always happens. And we are not able to just stand out there and paint the whole thing in a day ourselves. It's just, that's not how our lives work. But that's one of the big things that needs done. It may sound like, well, it's just a paint job, but campgrounds can kick you out, especially if you're a schoolie. You know, if you if you have a converted school bus, that is one thing to note if you're considering the schoolie lifestyle is that campgrounds mm -hmm. can, of course, they can do that too with older campers. If they don't like the way your rig looks, they don't have to let you in. And they, they can, can ask you to leave. Yep. They, you can even be, it's not happened to us, but we've, I've talked to people that it has happened to, and I really don't want to be in that situation. So the, the best thing for us to be proactive is to finish painting this thing. We had an area in our floor buckle mm -hmm. really big, so we had a, a floor friend of ours come by and take some boards out, uh, the, bo the boards that had buckled, and he took those out for us before our last trip so that we could at least go. Yeah, because it was like trying to go up over a big hump yeah. with our wheelchairs <laughs> and walking. Somebody was going to trip. Yeah, so he took out the bowed boards and, and took those out for us. So now we need to have it fixed back with some new wood. So we've got to buy some new wood to put back in, some new hardwood flooring. Yeah, it got... We'd never um, had real hardwood flooring in any, you know, in any of our homes before. And the wheelchair lift, a what bro a hydraulic seal mm -hmm. or a hydraulic, hydraulic seal blew out a bit the hydraulic fluid went under our floor now the floor underneath looks fine like we're we can see the subfloor everything looks okay and we can see a little bit underneath that and everything looks fine but we've just got to uh, have that you know have new boards put in and um, all of that you know that'll that'll lock the floor down and then we just have several other projects like our hot water heater someone wrecked into our bus last year and we had we had had so many different things happen that we've just not been able to travel like we wanted to just just laugh mm -hmm. just laugh just laugh things happening and so we didn't realize that the water was the hot water heater was busted so now we're it's so far out we're trying to see if we can even get that person that hit us their insurance their auto insurance to pay for that water heater to get replaced or is that something we're going to have to pay for ourselves with being on a fixed income mm -hmm. you know just put together what we can put together and obviously everything's got to be safe for the kids and so we've got a bunch just those things and mostly a bunch of little projects and there are several other things some of those we may document here for anybody else that's interested another big thing mechanically yeah. that i can think of is we don't have we have it, air conditioning in our bus to, uh, to use while we're going down the road. We have a, uh, an auto air conditioning system put in the bus that was originally put in. Or, or, you know, I guess it was original. I don't know. It was original to us, but it didn't work. And uh, we have another compressor to put on 
but we're just I'm just not able right now to do it and uh, it's hard to do it and we need to have some there's special some kind of thing, yeah, yeah there's some other special things to look at on a bus that is not the same for a car and it uses a whole lot more refrigerant than uh, than cars use so mm -hmm. that's something we have to think about too but there are certain things that if you've not done you don't know how to do and you may not have the right tool you have to have those certain hoses and there has to be some kind of certain vacuum thing to make it work i don't know you will figure out i'm not technical i don't hmm. know how to do any of that stuff don't enjoy it um, i know a lot of people are like i love learning new things whatever it is about if it if it has to do with technology or electronics mm -hmm. that's not my thing now you show me a new sewing machine that's super cool or like an air threaded serger that will blow my mind as far as other kinds of technology i'm grateful for them but i don't i'm i don't know how to use them so whenever tim's trying to explain this stuff to me my brain just goes completely <laughs> somewhere else i know that there are a few more projects we've we've been looking into trying to maybe hire some local help but right now there's there's just not a lot of budget to tack on with that so you know we'll just be doing the best we can to try to figure things out and we definitely want to take some trips obviously and we use yeah. this bus for our our wheelchair accessible vehicle so we have to have a working auto and our kids they get sick in the heat a lot of people say oh air conditioning who needs that but our kids get physically sick like mm -hmm. they cannot handle the heat they don't do well in heat at all they have they both have dysautonomia and that is a condition where your your body's the things that your body should do on its own for one thing like regulate temperature theirs doesn't do it correctly it's like an afterthought it, it manages pretty well with but the heat is not one of them so mm -hmm. we we can't go anywhere even in the heat of the day with the kids right now they just cannot handle it so we that's the number one thing is to get the air conditioner hopefully you can get the compressor put on and i know there's a belt that we need that we don't have so that those are our immediate plans as far as things to get done for the bus because Davis really wants to take part in this study. We need for this bus to be able to make it six hours at a stretch for about 11 trips up to Cincinnati. We may yeah. fly part of the time when we can, but that's also a, a price consideration too. We need to have the dough up front right. to fork it out to be reimbursed. But I those will, things. But we'll do, you know, we'll do whatever we can do to get our boy in the trial if he's accepted mm -hmm. because we talked about it with him at length and it's what he wants to do he really and he's really yeah. willing to try it it goes from a swallowed medicine to injections twice a week no once every two weeks <laughs> numbers yeah. yeah once every two weeks it doesn't matter to him he just wants to he just wants the chance mm -hmm. and i think he deserves it so that's the big push is to get some things done on the bus so that we have it for our everyday handicapped vehicle since it's the only thing we've got with a wheelchair lift. But also, there's a gnat. Great. <laughs> yeah. But also that if if he gets accepted to the study, we'd like to be able to take this instead of having to try to fly every time. So I think that's what we wanted to cover in this video. Do you have mm -hmm. anything else to add? I don't think so. Okay, well, thank you for watching this video. I hope that it was at least maybe some kind of knowledge that you didn't have before that you were able to pick up from it. We really would appreciate some subscribers. We're brand spanking new. If you know anybody with chronic illness or a person with disabilities who likes to travel or anybody that's interested in converting a school bus or what a converted school bus is like, share our channel. That'd be great. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment box below. Please like and subscribe. Yep. Push that like button. Yeah. And we'll see you next time. Bye.